All right, so we're gonna look at our first example for an inclined plane. Now, I just got done telling you that if you want to rotate your coordinate system, you can. And if it is accelerating, you do rotate your coordinate system. But if it's not accelerating, how do you decide, should I rotate it or not rotate it? And so this problem is gonna let us kind of figure out when should I be rotating my coordinate system and when shouldn't I be rotating my coordinate system? So let's go ahead and read it. So as a man pushes a piano of mass 180 kilograms so that it slides at a constant velocity. Constant velocity, that's our clue that the acceleration is zero. Constant velocity of 12 centimeters per second down the ramp that is inclined at 11 degrees above the horizontal. No appreciable friction is acting on the piano. And please calculate the magnitude and direction of his push if the man pushes parallel to the incline. All right, so if I want this to move down at a constant velocity, that means I need balanced forces because right now, if all I look at on here, there is gravity, mg, and there is a normal force, n. So part of gravity is holding it on the incline and part of gravity is pushing it down the incline. So gravity is trying to bring it down the incline so that means our man who's pushing parallel needs to push up the incline to slow that acceleration to zero so that it can move at a constant rate. Um, and when moving a piano, just as a public safety announcement here, um, you don't wanna be on this end of the piano because if something goes wrong, you get your foot caught, uh, you are gonna get run over by a piano. So stand on the top and hold it back, okay? Um, just a good word of caution. Now, how do I know if I'm gonna rotate my coordinate system or not in this case? Well, if I look at my forces, so if I rotate my coordinate system, like so, is that the right choice? Well, how many vectors do I need to resolve? So I need to resolve mg into components, but I don't need to resolve f or n. So I only need to resolve one vector. All right, so let's do that. So this is a good choice for us rotating our coordinate system because it's just less work. Because if I would have left it how it was, I wouldn't have to resolve mg, but I would have to resolve normal force and the applied force. So I'd have to resolve two vectors. So we wanna make our lives a little easier. So we're gonna resolve mg into components. Make sure you're drawing this little triangle correctly. This is the 90 degree corner. So make sure that looks correct when you draw it, okay? All right, so this side here is adjacent. So this is mg cosine of theta. This side is opposite. So this is mg sine of theta. So looking in my x direction here, and sometimes I like to redraw this one so I have F, I have mg cosine of theta, I have my normal force, and I have mg sine theta. So notice how when I redrew it, I kind of rotated it back to kind of orientate my x, y axis with more familiar look, and so that's kind of nice. So what I need to look at is the x direction here. So I'm gonna sum up the forces in the x direction. It's gonna be zero because again, it's at that constant velocity. So I have that applied force minus mg sine theta equals zero. So F is equal to mg sine theta. They give me all that information. So F is equal to 180 times 9.8 times the sine of 12 degrees. So the applied force of our person here comes out to, I guess I gotta calculate this quick, 367-ish. Well, let's, let's give it a couple more digits. 366.76, all right, Newtons. So what do I do in the situation where they ask, well, what if the man pushes horizontally, but still at that constant rate? Okay, so now, instead, I have gravity acting down, mg. I have normal force acting perpendicular to my surface, and I have the man pushing horizontally in on that object. All right, so let's apply those same rules we did over here. When acceleration is zero, I get to pick if I wanna rotate it or not. So here I rotated because then I only had to resolve one vector. How about over here? Should I rotate it or not rotate it? 
If I rotate it, I have to resolve one, I'm sorry, I have to resolve these two vectors. If I leave it, I only have to resolve that normal force. So in this case, we're not going to rotate our coordinate system. And again, this rotation choice is only present if the acceleration is zero. So I will have to resolve normal force into components here. Okay. So a lot of you are going to maybe get a little tripped up on the geometry of this. So let me kind of draw some other lines in here. So if I continue this normal force line down in, you see this angle is the same as that angle as we noted in the previous video. So this angle is theta, this angle is theta. That means that this angle is also theta. So we got to do a little bit of geometry here, but in the end we can handle that. So I have n cosine of theta there and sine of theta there. So let's go ahead and generate our equations from our free body diagram and solve for what this applied force is. So in the y direction, so I sum up the force in the y direction, it's going to be zero and I sum up the force in the x direction, I'm also going to get zero. In the y direction, it looks like I have n cosine of theta minus mg equals zero, and in the x direction, I have force minus n sine theta equals zero. So in order to find the force, I need to first find the normal force. So I'm gonna have to do that in my y direction here. So I get normal force is equal to mg divided by the cosine of theta. Go ahead, substitute that in, and so I get F is equal to mg times the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. And some of you might be thinking sine over cosine, tangent, you got it right. So F is equal to 180 times 9.8 times the tangent of theta, which was 12 degrees. And it turns out that this is very close to the number we got before. So let's go ahead and type that in. I get 374.95 newtons. So very similar values here, whether you push directly in or not. And that's because it's only off by 12 degrees and 12 degrees is not very much of an angle.